Hi guys. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, my sermon today is called No One's Barbie Doll. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I bless you for what you're about to speak and what you're about to do in this moment. Speak to, to us. Say Say something to all, all of us today, Lord God. Let let not a soul be untouched who is watching this video. Speak to me. Speak through me. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Um, this sermon, no, but no one's Barbie doll. Uh, came out of a personal situation uh, that I had this week. And I won't go into the personal situation, uh, but I will tell you my my thoughts after this situation was, um, was through. Like, I can't... I'm generally a very confident, happy person. But I came out of this situation feeling um, like what I had wasn't en enough. And um, in, in the midst of everything I was going through, the Lord said, you're no one's Barbie doll. He's like, you're not a showpiece for anyone to show off, and uh, you don't have to be primped and polished, and and you don't have to dress a certain way. I've made you. I love you just the way you are, and know that what you have is enough. Know that who you are is enough. I've crafted you specifically because I know what the world needs and I know what's inside of you. And, and oftentimes, because of this shallow, stupid world that we live in, we are just told to be a certain way. We are told that we have to do this and have to do that and I'm coming and I'm coming to the place now where I accept every part of me I'm a Christian who likes uh, true crime and and romance reads but I'm still a believer I'm I'm a Christian who likes um, the Bible, and I like the Backstreet Boys. Love the Backstreet Boys, actually. Um, like being being a Christian means that I'm a follower of Christ, but it doesn't mean that I'm not also human. And I, I'm not also, I don't have feelings that other people have. The only, I said this to somebody on the bus one time. I said, the only difference between you and me is I know, I, I know that if everyone else goes away and if everything ends, I know that there's someone who loves me and I'm sure um, that if I, that one day when I leave this world, I know where I'm going. Everything else, I'm just the same. I have the same struggles. I have the same pain. I have, I have the same things that I go through. And I'm, I'm not here for anyone 
to parade around or or to to show off i am me and the world will tell you all around that you are not enough the way you look is not enough who you are is not enough you need to be more of this and more of that and uh read the bible more or you need to um do this more stop doing that and i'm at the at the aging stage where if god wants to change something about me he knows what he needs to change he knows the person i'm becoming and i've learned to um i've learned to take it easy on myself not that i don't have to be accountable but just to know that whatever he wants from me he knows how to get from me and i don't i don't need to force myself to be a certain way or to not have certain things because it's not the christian thing or it's not the black thing or the or it's not the uh female thing i am who i am but if god wants to change it he will and i'm not saying it will it doesn't require change but the changes that people need to make need to come from the father and people need to know that they in regards to their looks or whatever they are enough exactly who uh how they are they don't need to uh change their hair change who they are don't sell yourself out don't sell yourself short you are enough exactly the way you are you are okay exactly the way you are and i'm not saying you don't need to change but those changes need to be made by you and god and the people that he's assigned to your life i'm not saying it's only god and me and i don't need to listen to anyone else if god has assigned certain people to your life to help you to guide you to to pray for you and to be your accountability partners yes i would say uh take their advice under consideration but even then ultimately it's you and god and i just want to tell you sister brother you're bad act just the way you are you're 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 a bad somebody you're just god has made you so you are fearfully and wonderfully made and there is nothing that you need to change about yourself nothing that you you need to forcibly do and if there is anything that needs to be changed cuz we all need to make changes if you submit yourself to the lord through process he will make those changes about you and um you're nobody's barbie doll to parade around to say oh she's looking so beautiful or whatever if it's if it's not your armor don't wear it if you don't like wear makeup don't wear it if you want to cut your hair don't cut it if you want to grow your hair long grow it um all those superficial things um that the world is concerned about God is more concerned about who you are on the inside and he wants to do all the inner work 
if you let him through a process. And I'm here to tell you, God's here to tell you, you're nobody's Barbie doll. You're nobody's plaything. You're nobody's like toy to to just do with what they will and throw away. You're too valuable for that, beloved. God wants me to tell you, you're too valuable to be in that relationship where you're letting that guy or that girl play with you. You're too valuable. Your life has too much purpose for that. You're nobody's Barbie doll. You're God's baby doll. Which mean which means you're God's child. You're not a plaything. You're not a Barbie doll which you which people pick up, play with and then just discard like uh, a five year old child when they're when they're fitted when they've got a shiny new toy, they open it and they then they play with it and then they discard it. No, no, no. You're nobody's Barbie doll. You're you're his baby doll, which means you are his child. And God wants me to tell you that you're so valuable. You're too valuable to be in that relationship where um, your partner or your spouse is putting you down or where you're saying, where he's saying you're too fat or too thin. If, if a person that you're intimate with, be a husband, boyfriend, wife, girlfriend, any way you put it, if they don't accept you for the way God made you, they're not the right person for you. I don't care how hot they are. I don't care how sexy they are. They can take that back. You have much more value to you. Honey, there's so much in you that you have not discovered yet. And I'm here to tell you, you're no one's Barbie doll, but you're but you're God's baby doll, which means you're God's child. He wants to hold you close and love you like never before. See, we're told by the world, we're told by society who we should be, what we should listen to, what what we should uh, what we should buy or what whatever and I'm I'm at the age now and stage now where I'm accepting of myself in all aspects. And yes, are there things that God needs to change? Probably. Are there things that, you know, that are not right with me? Probably, but it's up to me and God to make those changes. And God knows my address and he knows how to get my attention. And I just think we just need to to take our eyes off of what we think God wants, who we think God is, and begin to open our eyes and ask the pertinent questions. Like, um, what Jesus asked Peter, he said, who do men say that I am? And I think we, we need to, we need to ask that. Not who do men as in people, but Lord, who who do you say that I am? And let God define us by by his standards, not not the world standards of beauty, because the differences between the world t- standards of beauty is it's one thing is in and one thing is out. The world standards of beauty and of how you should be, how you should act, 
um, societal norms. It keeps on changing. But God's word of who you are and who you you should be never changes. Never changes. And God will never take you out, play with you, and discard you. You are so treasured and so loved by God. And I just want you to, to know that today. You are loved. You are valued. He has a purpose for your life. And it is just so wonderful because you don't know how wonderful he's made you. Um, we think there's a whole, like, it's just, it's just so funny. We think there's a whole lot of, uh, difference between us. Yes, uh, there should be a difference between how we act and how we are uh, spiritually, but our humanity is not different. I said something the other day um, in in a book thing that I did. I said I said sometime in um, in a story time Sunday thing that I did. I said sometimes I'm a Christian author, and sometimes I'm an author who's a Christian, which means. Sometimes I write books that are directly Christian-based and glorify the Lord, whatever. And sometimes I don't. Sometimes I write books that are just fun and they come to my mind and I want to be creative. And it doesn't mean I have to... Because I'm a Christian, for me, it doesn't mean I have to stay in the Christian box creatively all the time. I could write anything. I I could write any song or I can I can do it. not anything I want, but within reason, my creativity doesn't have to have those those uh, parameters. I mean for some people they do and that's fine. They're called to it. You do what God's called you to do. If he's called you to make uh, Christian films, do that. If he's called you to be a, um, a Christian in the secular uh, film industry, do that. Um, but he's called me to do both, actually. I love both. I've always loved both and because I love both, because I uh, I want to work in the Christian world and the secular world, I was told that you've got to choo- choose one. But I wasn't told that by God. I was told that by the church. And God says, choose this day who you will serve. But it doesn't mean I'm serving it. I'm just, I'm not serving creativity. I'm not a master to it. It's just the vehicle that I use. It's a vehicle that I use. Sometimes I use it to bring out um, points about God. And sometimes I use it to um, bring out... um, like in the in in my president presidents with benefits thing, that's not a Christian story, but I use that to show um, the um, the fact that um, when it st- it started off as an affair just sleeping together, but when she got cancer, that's when the relationship started to change. And even before she got cancer, 
when when she was um, making all these mistakes, did your parties or whatever, um, and couldn't find her footing, he stood with her and and uh, learned how to guide her through it. And when she got cancer, that really uh, shaped their relationship. And that is the meaning of that story. No, it's not a Christian, but the lessons that came out of it, they're human lessons. It was funny. It, it was funny. Um, I was l- looking at something the other day, and they said something about Christian sexuality. Um, and I thought, really? There's a, there's a Christian sexuality and another sexuality? There, there is not. Um, sexuality is sexuality, but the lens that you look through, um, that you view your sexuality is different. It's a different lens, and because I'm a believer, and because I'm a believer in Christ, my sexuality is not Christian. My sexuality didn't get saved, but the lens in which I view um, I view sexuality is from God's lens. And God's lens, God doesn't mean to punish us by saying we can't have sex before we get married. He means to give us a container. He, he means to give us a way to express our sexuality that won't hurt us. He doesn't, he doesn't say, oh, no premarital sex to punish us or to make us not have fun. He wants us to have as much fun as we want, but he wants us to use that container because he wants us to be safe while doing it. And I think when you understand that, it's not it's not Christian sexuality, it's human sexuality using a Christian lens that changes the whole thing. And then when you understand one 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 thing God told me, he said it's not no, it's just not now. He said, everything has its time and its container. He said, he said, uh, in regards to sexuality, he would say, N- it's not no, but just not now. See, we've been telling uh, people, no, no, you can't have sex before marriage. No, 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 no. But what we should be saying is not no, just not now. Because it's not the right time now, and it's not a container. You're not in the right container. So in the right container, you can have as much sex and experience as much sex as you want. But outside of that container, he would say, beloved, it's dangerous. Because he understands that sex is more than uh, using a condom or birth control or an IUD. He said, because Sex is so much more than physical stuff. Yes, condoms can protect you from uh, pregnancy and uh, diseases and all of that. And an IUD can protect you from pregnancy. But, uh, but he understands that like, there's no emotional condoms. And the emotional 
repercussions of having sex before you are in that container of marriage is lethal. And he says, uh, and he'll say, he'll say, uh, can, can you be happy having sex before marriage? Yes, you can. And those who say you can't, they don't know what they're talking about. But he's, but he'd be like, is it best for you? And he would be like, no, it's not best for you. My way is best for you. So he doesn't want to spoil our fun, but he wants to give us parameters for our fun. He wants us to walk in the destiny that he's got for us. And I think um, that uh, if you if you understand that you're going back to nobody's uh, you're nobody's Barbie doll, um, you're nobody's Barbie doll. Nobody deserves to play with you and throw you away. No guy deserves just to sleep with you and throw you away. No girl deserves just to sleep with you and throw you away or manipulate you using sex. Because what sometimes happens is um, people can manipulate other people using sex, either as a reward or as a tool of manipulation. So it becomes now not a tool to express your love, not a picture of prices and the church. It becomes a tool of manipulation. And a lot of people are being sexually manipulated. And the Lord's saying, no, 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 girl, daughter, son, I don't want you to be sexually manipulated by sex. I want you to be freed from that. Because there are so many people in so many ways being sexually manipulated by people they are not married to and some people that they are married to. Like, if you do this for me, I'll make love as a reward or, you know, if you give, if you give me sex, I will, or if you give me sex, if you don't give me sex, I will leave you or whatever. Sex is not a bargaining tool. Sex is not a bargaining tool and you're nobody's Barbie doll. You're nobody's thing to be played with especially not your sexuality. Whether you're married or whether you're not, because it could happen in both ways. Sexual manipulation could happen, does happen when you're married and you're single. For a single, for a, for a person in high school, the guy says, if you don't give me sex, I will leave you or the girl could say that or the girl could 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 use the fact that you're a guy and stimulated by sex by sex to control you a lot of men are being sexually controlled by by women or they're letting their sex tribe control their decisions and i break that spirit right now you're nobody's Ken doll, sir. You're not to be controlled by that. You are not to be played with. That is a way to express your love to your wife, to be a picture of Christ in the ch- church with your wife, not as a way um, to be manipulated by anyone or not as a way to get for a woman to get her hair done or whatever.
I break the spirit of sexual manipulation right now. And I declare that you will be free from this moment. I declare that God is healing you. God is restoring you from sexual trauma, sexual manipulation, all, all of that God is restoring right now. And you are clean. I don't know what's been happening to you, but like, there's somebody under the sound of my voice right now that in their childhood, they were sexually abused or molested. And I declare right now that that won't hold you anymore, that you, that you are called a daughter of God, that you are called a son of God, and that can't hold you anymore. That wasn't your fault. What that joker did to you wasn't your fault. What that person did to you wasn't your fault. And I break the chain of sexual manipulation. Because that that happened to you, you're like, oh, because they use sex to manipulate me or to abuse me. I'm going to do that to others. And I... That's a spirit, and I break it right now. I feel it breaking in the room. You're nobody's plaything. You're nobody's toy. You're nobody's... You're God's girl. You're God's boy. You're God's man. You're God's woman. You are not to be played with. You are not to be toyed with. And sex is not supposed to be a tool for for people to manipulate. Far, far too many people are using sex as a tool to, manip, to, to manipulate and play with people. Far too many people are using money as a tool to manipulate and play with people. They're they're making you think that it's your fault. They're making you think that you're dirty and you're cheap. But the Lord has made you clean on this day. The Lord has made you clean on this day. And I, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I declare the start of freedom. I declare free, freedom is, is growing in your spirit today. I declare, I declare that everything that's been holding you back with sexual manipulation, all the people that you've been allowing to manipulate, like you using sex, whether it be a husband, a boyfriend, a partner, they won't have po power over you anymore. God only has the power. You're no one's Barbie doll. You're no one's plaything. You're not to be primped and prodded. You are special. You are valuable. Past your vagina, past your penis, past your breast, past your butt. You are valuable because of who you are inside. You are valuable because of the heart and spirit God has given you. Not because your body, your body houses your spirit and your soul. But the most valued part of you is your spirit. Your spirit is the part that connects with God. Your spirit is the part that communes with God. Your spirit is the part that gets saved. Yes, God, I thank you today. I thank you for freeing those people that th that that think that they deserve to be played with, they deserve to be toyed with because they made a mistake in their past. There is somebody under the sound of my voice. You lost your virginity and seduced a person, whether it be guy, girl, um, for. You seduce them and you slept with them. And now um, you think you have a right 
to be manipulating using sex because you did that to, to one other person. So you're punishing yourself. Be free. God says be, pre- be free. And I break that spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit. I break that spirit. You don't deserve to be sexually manipulated. You make a you made a mistake. We all make mistakes. How long are you gonna punish yourself or let people punish you or let people hold you to your past? A lot of the church doesn't understand that a lot of sexual sin and or a lot of sin in general, I should say say stems from somewhere it's not just what you see it's not just oh we want to go back wild or we just want to have sex because we can't control our hormones it starts from somewhere and unless we address the root in the church it'll continue happening and unless we address sexual manipulation inside marriage and outside marriage, it'll continue. And sexual manipulation happens in the church and outside of the church. It's a huge problem that we don't talk about, but I'm coming after that spirit today. No playthings, no Barbie doll, you're God's baby doll. You're you're no one's Barbie doll, but you're his baby doll. You're his child. He wants to hold you close. That was heavy today. Heavy, but necessary. And I pray that it helped you. Please share this with someone that you think it could help someone who has self-esteem issues, someone who's being manipulated or using manipulation um, uh, sexually or other ways to let them know that there is hope and there is help and there is freedom. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you guys. Thank you guys today. Thank you so much for joining me.